to start uh, my submissions by just highlighting the main issues that we would like you to take into account in making the determination as to whether, as to whether or not you should come to the conclusion that a case of impeachment has been achieved. But our biggest emphasis, uh, honorable senators, is that one, you maintain your mind on the question of whether a standard of proof has been achieved in these allegations against the uh, deputy governor. And number two, that the burden of proving that indeed there were these breaches was on the uh, county assembly. Correlated to that is that the case should not, your decision on whether or not to impeach should not be on a basis of what is newly introduced in the course of these proceedings, as my learned friend Mr. Michukia said, being amongst others the allegations of infanticide. Now, going back to the substance of my submissions, I will elaborate on what I said when I was doing the opening address, that the entirety of this case is not founded on any document on the part of the accusers. There is no document, for instance, on the part of Dennis who says he bribed to show that indeed he had any money with which he could have given to the deputy governor to constitute a bribe from him to the deputy governor. There is no document from his brother to show that indeed the arrest was based on any other issue other than the dispute as to who was the owner of the trees. There is no document on the part of Lucy to suggest that indeed, other than the fact that money was sent by reason of a, 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 an error, there is nothing to suggest that indeed that money was based on an understanding of corruption. And so, at the end of the day then, honorable senators, you will have to make a determination on this issue on the basis of who to believe. And the competition in terms of who to believe in this case would be his brother, versus, uh, his brother Robin versus Dr. Robert. It will be Mr. and Mrs. Misati, Mr. Misati being 68 years old, retired civil servant Judge Koa, versus his son who is at seven years old. Who do you choose to believe? And we already indicated to you that the wife of Mr. Misati sworn affidavit, which we are relying on, and we produced the MPSA uh, uh, paper trail. I am aware that my colleagues have said that the wife was maintained in this case as a decoy. And we are saying that cannot be true because we brought you the MPSA record. And the husband had testified on the, on the issue uh, being the background of how that money was raised and was remitted. So you would have to make a choice of who to believe between the son and the father. And in the event you have any doubt, it is our contention that considering the standard of proof that this uh, honorable Senate has adopted as prescribed by both the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, the benefit of doubt should go to Dr. Monda. We would also pray that in considering this, you be careful that you do not end up with a situation where you allow a national senate to be a forum for determination of family disputes. All the witnesses and the entirety of the case that the county assembly has brought is founded and based on family. Now, I would like to digress at this point and just point out to you like this that we have brought material with which we have contended that the reason why the deputy governor is standing trial is because of the issues he has raised to the governor and that the governor then has initiated these proceedings for the deputy governor's impeachment. Now, 
we would pray very much that in the, in the course of your consideration of this impeachment motion, that motive, that reason for having brought this case be a dominant factor in your minds. But more importantly, the decision having been made and determination having been arrived at that, you, you must, that he must be subjected to impeachment, the fact that they were not able to find any case of either procurement, uh, misappropriation of funds, uh, and accountability of any other issue, the fact that the most that they could come with to you for impeachment, that the only thing they could come is through families, through his brother, through his, the son of uh, Mr. Misati, to spoil the friendship, that that is the only thing they could, they could come up with, we submit honorable senators, is an indication of just how impeccable the deputy governor is. That they couldn't get anything other than to go through families to, mitigate, to initiate and um, engineer uh, these uh, uh, impeachment proceedings. Now, before I come to the standard of proof, I would want to just invite your attention also to the fact that the main allegations in this, in this, uh, before this Senate for impeachment being whether or not he received a bribe from Dennis, whether he gave a, a bribe to Lucy, whether he threatened Dennis, whether he misused the county staff, and whether he is culpable for having his brother arrested, are all issues that are in the hands of institutions and agencies that you as legislators, as lawmakers, have designated to take responsibility of investigating and determining. The three first counts being the question of whether he received a bribe from Dennis, whether he gave a bribe to Lucy, and whether he actually threatened Dennis are all issues which the witnesses readily admit are in the hands of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. The issue of whether he, caused, he improperly caused the arrest of his brother is an issue before the police. And the issue of whether or not there was misuse of the county staff, the witness came and said is in the hands of the county assembly. With that in mind then, we would like the question to occur to you as you entertain the question of whether or not to impeach as to whether you will choose to intercept a process of investigation by ESCC, by the police, and by the Kisi County Assembly, you will intercept that process, take over the process, and make a decision on it. Or you would rather wait for the determination of the cases before those agencies, which you yourself as legislators have already determined should make those decisions. Now, my colleagues for the County Assembly, <coughs> have relied on two cases, and those two cases are of very doubtful basis. The first one is the very repeated story of one Nancy Parasa having pinched somebody's nose. That's one thing they are relying on to persuade you that you should impeach the deputy governor. The other one they are relying on is the rep repeated reference to Watergate. Now, uh, honorable senators, we would like on our part to bring you nearer home on what you yourselves have said and in terms of your standard of proof for purposes of determining impeachment. And the first point, the first threshold is the provisions of Article 181 of the Constitution. Article 181 of the Constitution 1, A and, A and C require that before you come to the conclusion that there is reason to impeach a deputy governor, or rather a governor, you need to be satisfied that indeed there is cross violation. And our question then to you would be, on all the five counts, on the allegation of a bribe from Dennis, uh, giving a bribe to Lucy Waito, the allegation, the, threat, the alleged threat to Dennis, the alleged misuse of county staff, the alleged arrest of the brother. Do you come to the conclusion that indeed there is cross violation? The other criteria is found at Article 181, 1B, being that there is a serious reason to, be, to believe that a crime has been committed. 
And we submit, honorable members, that based on the analysis of facts that my colleague who came before me has made of the facts, and which I will look at again briefly in a short moment, we submit that there is no manifestation of any gross violation of the law, and there is no serious reason to believe there is any crime that was committed. And further, in applying that criteria, when you are considering the question of whether or not to impeach uh, the Honorable Governor, His Excellency Honorable Iria, you, through your special committee, you said that in the event an issue is in the hands of an investigative agency, then that investigative agency should be allowed to conclude their proceedings. And in that case, you said the EACC and the Public Procurement and Oversight Authority should be given room to conclude the process. And if they come to a conclusion that they, is, there is indeed any wrongdoing, then they can come back to the Senate through the uh, County Assembly. And we are requesting that you apply the same standard, that having pointed the witnesses of the prosecution, and I'm saying prosecution in this case uh, being the county assembly. Having come and readily told you these issues are in the police hands, these issues are in the hands of ESCC, these issues are being investigated by the county assembly uh, functions. Having said that, it brings you irresistibly to the need of maintaining the same position you took in a real case, being that this is a case that in fairness should be left to those agencies to conclude as you did in that case, and that you apply the same standard uh, as you did, uh, you apply the same standard in the case of Dr. Monda as you did in the case of Honorable Iria. The same position was taken in the case of Professor Chepuany, Carrillo, uh, uh, Carrillo County Governor, where you said, before you as a Senate can step in, you need to ha satisfy yourself that all other oversight agencies and mechanisms have been exhausted, and that it is not proper that the Senate is the default option every time somebody feels like there is a fight between a brother and brother over trees, there is a fight about whether or not there is an abortion, there is a fight as to whether or not uh, there was an error in pressing a letter G as opposed to letter H, in the case of the Lucy. And so we are saying, uh, honorable members, the same way you decline to entertain the case of Professor Chepon, please decline to entertain the case of Professor, uh, of Dr. Uh, Monda, to the extent to which the other agencies that exercise oversight have not been exhausted and they are not a default option. We also rely on the determination made after this Senate had had the case, in the case of Songo, which was determined, Honorable Songo, which was determined at the Supreme Court, that when considering the question of whether or not there is an excess warranting the need for impeachment, the evidence should be credible and there should be evidence of extraordinary wrongdoing. And I just want to put a lot of premium on the use of the word extraordinary wrongdoing. And we submit, honorable senators, that in the case of Dr. Monda, when you are told that there was a bribe given to Dennis by, the, the, that Dennis gave the governor a bribe, when you are told that, and then Dr. Monda comes to you and tells you, number one, the money did not belong to Dennis, it belonged to his parents. Number two, Dennis did not participate in the discussions about that money. He has no idea what was discussed before the money was sent. When you're given that kind of evidence, where, in fairness, with what reasonable measure would you say there is extraordinary wrongdoing to be found in the conduct of Dr. Monda? When the father of, the, of Dennis is saying, it was my money, I was refunding a debt, uh, a loan, uh, some money I had taken earlier on, a loan that I had taken earlier on. We are asking, where is the extraordinary wrongdoing? 
Where is the gross violation? Where is the serious crime in the issue of the 100,000 to Lucy Wahito? It is a fact that indeed money went to the empress of Lucy Wahito. But we pray that you juxtapose that point with number one, the point we have made that it was an error. Now, I am aware from the questions that you asked uh, Dr. Monda in the course of uh, his evidence <coughs> as to the question of whether he has MPSA up, why he slept without seeing who the man had gone to, and so on and so forth. But all that said, all that said and done, if I were uh, Mr. Ndegwa, I would refer you to the Bible and say, throw the first stone if indeed you can say none of you who has a fault in this Senate has never made a mistake to send money to a wrong person. And we pray that to the extent, I would want to imagine that 100% of you have done. But even if it's not 100%, I'm sure most of you have done. Please do not throw a stone in the direction of Dr. Monda merely because he made a mistake that any of you could have done and is, or, or, or is otherwise likely to do. And for those people who are skeptical about whether or not the mistake was there, we pray that number one, where you have doubt, that doubt should be exercised to the benefit of Dr. Monda. On the allegation of threats to Dennis, Dennis says that the threats were communicated to him through his father. His father comes and says, I have never been told anything that constitutes or amounts to a threat to Dennis. And so, with that kind of a situation where Dennis readily admits that I never spoke with Dr. Monda, and says that threat was communicated to, through the father, and the father says there was no such threat. Where do you find cross violation? Where do you find serious basis to assume that a, a, serious, a crime has been committed? Where do you find a basis to say there was an extraordinary wrong committed as was determined in the case of His Excellency uh, Honorable Songo? On the issue of the county staff, we are all, the witness came and readily considered that it, the deployment of the staff is not exercised by the, deputy, by the deputy governor. The staff are assigned to him. He doesn't have a say on who is to be sent there. Now, if, as that witness said, it were to turn out that the wrong type of staff was sent there, that there are enforcement officers who are sent to cook, and were to cook for dogs, as Mr. Ndegwa said. If that were to be the case, whose mistake is it? Is it, are you going to impeach Dr. Monda for having been sent enforcement officers to go to the kitchen, or are you going to ask that the county, assembly, uh, the county enforcement officer and their public service commission do account for that? We pray that you do find that that point as to whether or not the right staff were there, cannot be pegged on the head and on the shoulders of Dr. Monda. Now, the issue of the 20 enforcement staff, you saw clips being, there were attempts to play clips and so on and so forth. Nowhere did you see the 20 staff, the 20 enforcement officers going to effect arrest on uh, uh, Rope and the, the brother of Dr. Monda. There's nowhere where there's any evidence of 20 people going there. But assuming even for argument's sake that that was the case, I would pray and plead to persuade you, Honorable Senators, that the real question here is whether or not Robin and Robert had a dispute over trees. And that is cast in stone. It is an absolute fact that indeed the two of them had a dispute over trees, and the witness who brought this complaint came here and said that. Number two, it is an absolute fact that the report was taken to the police. Three, it is an absolute fact that it is the police who effected the arrest and took uh, Ruben to the police station. He was not taken to the cells belonging to Kisi County, where then you would come and draw a conclusion that probably the enforcement officers were in charge of that process of the arrest. With all those grounds, if you were to be inclined or to be tempted 
to deem a wrongdoing to have obtained, shouldn't the OCS of the relevant police station have been summoned instead of having summoned Mr. Agai? Shouldn't that have been the person to be summoned to come and say whether indeed there were 20 enforcement officers and whether there was a basis for the need to arrest the brother? We pray that you do find that on the premises of that issue, there is no manifestation there is no manifestation of cross violation. There is no re reason to deem that a crime was committed, and there is nothing extraordinary that uh, there is nothing negatively extraordinary that uh, Dr. Monda did to warrant the need for him to be subjected to impeachment. Lastly, on that issue of the most enforcement officers, the witness, Mr. Agai, came here and produced three letters. All the three letters are very consistent in what they say. They all say that the sub-county enforcement officer is the one who went with those officers. So assuming those people went, and we are saying there is no evidence that they went, even assuming they went there, there is nowhere where the hand of the deputy governor can be said to have existed in the deployment of those officers. For those reasons, then, uh, honorable senators and uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, we pray that you come to the conclusion that indeed, on the allegations brought against Dr. Monda, there is no evidence of cross misconduct, there is no evidence of him having committed any serious crime, and there is no evidence of him having abused his office or having, conduct, having done anything extraordinary to warrant the need to hold him liable for um, impeachment. I would like to cover a few of the other grounds that my colleagues have, uh, have raised in the uh, submissions. One is the issue of bursaries. Now, several times in the course of our presentation of our evidence, we kept being told, what is the relevance of the issue of the change of the budget from the original budget passed by the uh, assembly to the budget that was submitted to the controller of budget? What is the relevance of, uh, where is the basis of the allegation that, uh, or rather the point that the governor has migrated from he, the official offices to his home? and so on and so forth. We pray that as you go, as you reflect on this case also, the question occurs to you, what is the relevance of making the allegation that Dr. Monda is responsible for the infanticide? That has not been proven. So the case of the, process, the, case of the county assembly is, okay, you, we may not have proved that there was any bribe given to Dr. Monda by Dennis. We may not have proved that uh, Lucy Waito was received the money as a bribe. We may not have proved that uh, Dennis was threatened. We may not have proved that the county staff were misused. We may not have proved that um, the, the brother was, impro was properly arrested. We may not have proved that. But please, even if you come to that conclusion, move on then and impeach him on the other grounds. One being that he's responsible for infanticide, and my colleague in his usual elo eloquence makes reference to blood, the cry of a baby, and all that. Where is that case? Was any case brought before the county assembly about any baby who was killed by Dr. Monda? And if there was none, we pray that the emotions that was being, that the attempt to, emo, to, to, to whip up emotions amongst yourselves should be rejected. There was an attempt also to use videos to say, or there's somebody who sells mutura, or there's somebody who bribed, uh, was asked for 20 million to get a bursary of 3,000, and so on and so forth. Now, I would like to address the two issues that arise from their video and the question of bursaries. The county assembly came and said, we did public participation. The public participation report is here. It is at page 21 to 54 of the county assembly report, uh, record. The entirety of that report does not make reference to any video anywhere. And 
we would want to be as respectful as possible both the county assembly and most especially much as they probably the we would like to be respectful to them even if it were to be the case that they do not deserve it but we would really like to be very respectful to you and so when we say that the videos are fabrication we say that with a lot of caution we are saying that after thinking about it seriously we say that because it is inevitable for us to tell you that indeed those videos which a number of the senators said the Mama Mutura and a couple of others, other, others tied to them. We are telling you, please, when you look at it, look at it with circumspection, with reference to the fact that it is not in the public participation report. If it was there, what was difficult about it being incorporated there? Number two, if it was there, where is the background of public participation? We pray that you reject those videos you reject the emotion that it, those videos were meant to, to whip up. On the bursaries, when the witnesses were cross-examined, they came to a point both especially Honorable Sioja, uh, Honorable Karen Magara, and uh, the other witnesses readily said that the issues of bursaries are domiciled in the office of the governor and that there is a committee that deals with those bursaries. So at what point would you as senators be being asked to get to deem Dr. Monda to be involved in bursaries when the witnesses for the county assembly are contradicting their own witnesses through those videos saying that bursaries have nothing to do with the deputy governor. We pray that the issues around the videos and the bursaries do apply to every aspect of this case, being that there is a lot of manipulation of testimony, fabrication of testimony, and an attempt to mislead this uh, Senate. Lastly, on that issue of uh, bursaries and video, I pray to remind you that indeed those issues did not come back at the assembly, and you remain faithful to the intention of the law that for you to entertain and determine whether or not to impeach a, deputy gover a governor or a deputy governor, it has to escalate from the county assembly. And the sense of escalating from the county assembly is that both the case, the evidence, and the issues should remain the same at the county assembly and at this uh, Senate. And that therefore, the issue of Basari not having, be, not having been there, the videos not having been there at the county assembly, they are not eligible for your consideration. The, my colleagues for the yeah. county assembly have also introduced another issue that was not in the county assembly. The issue of Cladis Aminga. Gladys Aminga was not a witness, and in, his statement that, in her statement that we saw today, she says that having listened to what went on at the county assembly, being a process of filling up gaps that we challenged at the county assembly, I have come to explain this and this. And she says that there's somebody by the name Bernard who was given a tender. That Bernard is a cousin of Dr. Monda and his wife Joyce. And when Dr. Monda was asked, he says, I don't know that Bernard. And so the question is, to what extent would the county assembly go to fabricate evidence and to assign relatives so as to demonstrate an alleged case of manipulation of procurement? One. Number two, my colleagues in the course of cross-examination of Dr. Monda asked him to confirm that indeed he forced Gladys Aminga to award a tender to the said Bernard. And when Dr. Monda insisted on being shown where that alleged force was there, they abandoned that line. And the point we want to make is, the face of that statement does not suggest anywhere that Dr. Monda was involved in any tender awards to Bernard, a person he doesn't know, or any payments, or the companies is involved in. And the arguments by the county assembly reflect how disparate they are 
that when they cannot demonstrate the issue of the alleged receipt of a bribe from Dennis Misati, when they cannot demonstrate that uh, Lucy Waito was bribed, when they cannot demonstrate that uh, Dennis was threatened, when they cannot demonstrate that um, county staff were misused, when they cannot show that uh, the brother was irregularly arrested, when they cannot prove any of that, they say, okay, let's move on. Look at this Aminga. Don't you see that this Aminga is a relative, that this Aminga gave a tender to Bernard, that Bernard has two companies, that these two companies and Bernard are related to Dr. Monda. We pray that you reject the totality of that on the two grounds. One, that the evidence, the testimony of that Aminga on the face of it does not support what they were trying to say. And number two was not part of the case that was there at the county assembly. Arguments were made also about the 100,000 that were sent to Cladis Aminga. Cladis Aminga readily said that as a witness of the county assembly, I received 100,000. And in our, in our affidavit, we have said in addition to 100,000, he received another 40,000 and received another 65,000. Um, Cladis Aminga, who is part of the county assembly case, readily said, yes, I received the money, and has assigned and ascribed a reason to the receipt of that money. And what is the reason? Supply of ballast and other construction items and transport services. And so we would pray that even as you reflect on that issue, Dr. Monda cannot be subjected to a process of impeachment on the issue around Cladis uh, Aminga, when Cladis Aminga himself has bailed out the case of the county assembly, she has said it is true I received the money and the value for this is this, and it is not available to you, Honorable Senator, as I submit, for you to go behind the word of uh, Cladis Aminga and start entertaining the arguments made by the advocates for the uh, county assembly who should actually be defending that Cladis Aminga. Now, we, I would like to just to say a few things then on the issue of the technical issues that we raised. The, the county assembly witnesses, especially the mover of the motion, Honorable Sioja, readily agrees that the motion was prosecuted out of time and public participation was conducted out of time. That he readily accepts. And he says it is indeed contrary to the provisions of Standing Order 60 to 64 of the standing order for county assembly, Kisi County Assembly. He, say, he said he attached particulars to the notice that he moved on 13th of February 2024. And when asked, he says, yes, I can see the notice doesn't have particulars, but indeed those particulars were given. And so the question is, what happened to those particulars? So, but the bottom line is this, the notice that was moved on 13th, as you look at it today, did not have details and particulars. The motion was not moved under the provisions of Section 15 of County Government Act and the standing orders of Kisi County Assembly, standing orders number 197 and 198. With all those considerations, my colleagues have told you that please, when you go into those technical issues, Treat the technical issues as an issue because the defense, Dr. Monda's defense, have acquiesced by bringing witnesses. And so I would want to ask the question then, what were we supposed to do? Were we supposed to just come and smile and not do anything? One. Number two, we raised those issues at the start of these proceedings, and the ruling asked us that the issues you are alleging, the question of whether or not it was on time, whether or not it had particulars, whether or not it was moved properly, are issues that will have to determine after listening to the facts. And so we are saying that by presenting witnesses, we were not acquiescing nor abandoning our preliminary issues. We were doing what the, pre what the ruling of this uh, Senate said, being that demonstrate 
the basis of those technical arguments through the facts that you will adduce. And we have demonstrated that spectacularly through both cross-examination of the witnesses of the, of the county assembly and through our own witnesses confirming that each of those wrong, wrongdoings happened. Now, I am aware that um, a number of senators have said that we should, based on the provisions of Article 152 of the Constitution, no, sorry, 159 of the Constitution, we do not want to look at the technicalities. And then, on our part, for the Deputy Governor, then we would want to ask you, what was the purpose then of the rules? Why are we sitting? Why did we sit yesterday up to midnight? Why are you sitting past hours today? Isn't it because the law prescribes that some things are to be done within time? Isn't it because you are being faithful to timelines? And if you, at this national level as senators, are prepared to go out of your way and deal with, comply with the law, why should you give latitude to county assemblies to say, we will smilingly disobey the timelines that have been set and it shouldn't matter? Why should you extend that latitude? And most especially when those county assemblies do not come and say, oh, sorry, we were out of time because there was an earthquake. They are not saying we are out of time because there was COVID outbreak. They are not giving any reason or any excuse for why they are out of time. We pray that for purposes of standardization of the rights of the parties, for purposes of the rule of law, you do insist to that unless there's a good reason why you should invoke the provisions of Article 159 and entertain issues and say it is a technicality. Before you do that, a justification needs to have obtained and that justification and the law allows for that extension. We submit that the law does not allow anywhere for that extension of time. And therefore, we pray that you do reject the motions for lacking particulars, for mutating from the date of 13th when the notice was issued, and mutating into something different by the time it was being moved on the 21st as a different um, motion, and for not having been moved properly. We pray that you do be faithful to the law that is keeping you seated here today up to this time and yesterday also, you do enforce that law and say that motion is null and void to that extent. Now, I am aware that the probability is that the county assemblies have been casual about it. I would pray that uh, the, count, the, the Senate, in developing jurisprudence, do not encourage that feeling that it doesn't matter. All we need is to just throw anything in the face of the Senate, and the Senate will readily entertain it that you do say everybody must follow the law and that the right, otherwise the rights of parties, including Dr. Monda, will stand violated. Um, I would like then at this point to cede the few remaining minutes to my colleague, Mr. Ochoki. But before I do that, I would just like to cover one other issue on the issue of public participation. I've already pointed out to you that the public participation was not signed. The public participation was, was done out of time. It was done on 26, which was three days after the close of the period within which those things were, within which the impeachment was to have been concluded by 23rd, and that uh, clearly, and this is very important for us, the public participation was not funded. It, they just said, let's go for public participation. Now, without funding, you have a situation, as we demonstrated through evidence, that the governor then took charge of it, which is a different arm of the county assembly. He funded the process. Not only funded in terms of cash, he also funded it by in terms of personnel. And we pointed out to you instances where the ward administrators were the ones collecting the fees. We want to pray that you do find that and serious, actually we would want to pray that you apply the criteria of Article 181 of the Constitution, being that that kind of conduct was a gross violation of the Constitution, a gross misconduct, uh, uh, evidence of serious crime, and an ex extraordinary excess on the part of the governor and the executive. Uh, 
With that, then I would pray, uh, sorry, one last thing before I hand over. Arguments have been made about uh, Lucy Waito having been bribed. Now, collateral to our explanation that indeed it was an error to have sent this money to Lucy Wahito, we pray that you keep in your minds these other collateral circumstances. Number one, Lucy in her statement of 8th of February says the interviews were done on 15th of May 2023. And says this money came to me on 28th of May, which is approximately 13 days down the line. Now, she also readily says that the interviews that were done, whichever date it was done, according to her, she wanted to change the date from 15th to 25th. But our position is that it was on 25th, but whichever way you look at it, whether it was 15th or 25th, the position still remains that by the time she is receiving the money, the interviews have been done, scoring has been done, and the scoring has been done by people other than her. And she says, if you want to succeed in those interviews, assuming anybody really, really was determined to succeed in those interviews by crook uh, or whatever means, you would need to go to those people who are scoring. She does not say that when, in her allegation, she does not say that Dr. Monda told me to go and influence the board members. So if you are to say that there was any intention of influencing the interviews, wouldn't it be necessary then to ascribe intelligence to the mind of Dr. Monda, and in ascribing, it to, uh, ascribing that intelligence to him, to say that if he was really interested in compromising the process of getting this job for Dennis, he would go to the board members who are answerable to him because those people are appointed by the office of, that, of, the, deputy, of the governor, where he serves as the deputy. So we pray that you keep in mind those two things. One, by the time this money is coming, scoring has been done, and the winner or the successful candidate is already a closed issue. Number two, if it was intended to bribe and get this job for Dennis, the people that needed to have been approached are the people who are scoring, and uh, it is a fact that there is no allegation of those people having been uh, approached. And for those reasons then, I pray, Honorable Senators, that you do find that the threshold has not been achieved in this uh, case of Dr. Monda. One, number two, that this Senate cannot be a platform of any default case of a pen being lost, they come here to say impeach him. Uh, whatever small thing, uh, including family disputes, that this Senate, this Honorable Senate, is not a forum for that kind of uh, of, of resolving family disputes. Number three, that you do find that to the extent to which these cases are in the hands of constitutionally mandated agencies, being ESCC, the police, and the county assembly, you should cede ground for those institutions to conclude their process. And lastly, that considering that this is a question of one word against the other, you do find that our witnesses are credible, are superior in the quality of their testimony as opposed to the witnesses who the county assembly called in the disparate uh, attempt to achieve the removal of the deputy governor. With that, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, and within our time, I would request that my colleague, Mr. Ochoki, comes to close our submissions. Thank you very much, Honorable Senators, and uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Honorable Speaker, sir, and Senators, allow me very, very briefly just address uh, the facts that uh, my colleagues very emotionally wanted you to believe. Uh, a church elder has been called a culprit and a liar in this Honorable House. But if you are to look at the evidence in totality, Honorable Senators, you are being told to send the Honorable Deputy Governor home, when he never spoke at any given time to the complainant, the gentleman that is now famously known as Dennis. Dennis